Far below the surface of the South Pacific Ocean, the Gregory Party have spent their first night in Euclidea, the hidden city of the Euclidean scientists. Mrs. Gregory, her young daughter Joan, Captain Bradford, and Jerry Hall found very fine quarters assigned to them in the Euclidean city. They also found a splendid dinner served with Mrs. Gregory's own table linen and silver. They have just finished breakfast, which appeared mysteriously at the right moment. As we find them now, our four adventuring friends are seated around the breakfast table, discussing their plans for the day. No, thanks. I couldn't eat another bite. I'm sure I couldn't, Jerry. Well, I think we all did very well for ourselves at this breakfast. I agree with you, Mother. For people who have as much to fear in the future as we have, the present is indeed kind to us. Oh, I don't think we've got so much to fear, but I'll bet we've got plenty to see. For one thing, I'd like to see where all this food comes from. Just what I was going to say, Jerry. I'd formed the opinion that Euclidean's existed entirely on those condensed food tablets. Sure doesn't look much like that now. Fresh milk, fresh butter, and last night all those fresh vegetables. Hmm, this is a different story from the way we lived up inside that island. I think we may safely explore outside our quarters now, Captain Bradford. Yes, Tex. I'm anxious to get started myself. Yeah, me too. Looks like that's the pleasure of the meeting, then. Let's go. Well, where do we start? I would suggest we start by finding an outer door. Yes, Joan, dear. We'll have to leave this large room or group of rooms if we're going to get anywhere. No, all we need is a door. Well, while you're looking for that, I'll get some heavy wraps for Joan and myself. Well, you won't need them, Mrs. Gregory. But if we're going outside, Mother, we'll... where do you think outside will be? Have you forgotten that we are 200 feet below the level of the ocean? Oh, oh yes. <laughs> I'm afraid you slipped a little air, Pat. Outdoors is very liable to be the same as indoors in this place. Oh, sure it will. No matter where we go, we'll still be inside this underwater city. I think we will find the door to the outer corridor is over there. What makes you think that, Joan? Our sleeping quarters and the dining room occupy nearly all of the other side. That should be the outer door. Well, it won't take long to find out. Come on. And if one of these panels does prove to be the door, we still have the fun of opening it. Joan and I got a lot of doors open once just by... Hey, look. Yes, Jerry. Another of the voice control doors. And this is the beginning of another series of weird experiences, I suppose. Looks like it, Pat. But remember that these Euclidians are human, just as we are. If they can stand it, so can we. Well, here we are, back in our disappearing hall again. Yes, there is the elevator shaft through which we came. And now our steps make no sound. Hmm, more of the soundproofing. We'll just have to learn to take that sort of thing for granted and not lose any time speculating on it, or we'll spend all our time doing that. Well, where do we go first? I think we should continue along this corridor until we see something of interest. Then we've gone far enough now. Yes, it's all interesting, but I'd prefer to see something a little different for a change. Let's keep on walking. Looks like our tunnel splits up pretty soon. So it does, Jerry. Just ahead, there are two corridors. Well, I guess we can choose the one we want to use. G-47 said we could go anywhere we wanted to. Isn't this floor sloping sharply downward? I'll say it is. Feels like we're walking downhill. G-47 said this was the highest level of the ocean floor city. We may have to descend some distance before we find anything worthy of our inspection. At least we'll have to go on down until we find a doorway to use getting out of this tunnel. Oh, here's the dividing line. Which way do we go? Well, there's no way of deciding that I can see. If any of you have any preference, I'll gladly go with you. Makes no difference to me. I got it. Let's split up and try both of these tunnels. Excellent, Jerry. You and I will take one side and Mother and Captain Bradford the other. No, I'd prefer we stayed together, Tom. Oh, gee, Mrs. Gregory, nothing's going to happen to us. Oh, G-47 said would be safe, didn't he? Yes, if he can be depended on. I think G-47 does not have to trouble himself to the extent of telling anything other than the truth. I suppose you're right. Our position is so obviously hopeless that none of the Euclidians would even bother to deceive us. Then you'll let Joan and me go on a sightseeing tour of our own? Please, Mother. What do you think, Tex? Oh, I don't see where there's anything going to hurt them. I'd say let the youngsters go, but set a time to meet us back at our own quarters. Very well, but understand, Joan, and you, Jerry that you're to come back to our own quarters in... Mm, how long, Tex? Mm, why not make it noon? I suppose they'll serve our lunch at noon, won't they, Joan? I think so, exactly at 12 noon. Okay, then. We'll meet you back here at noon. Come on, Joan. We will be prompt. Have no fear of that, Mother. Well, see that you are, Joan. I'll worry if you're late. And don't ask too many questions. Try to keep out of the way as much as possible. Aye, aye, Skipper. Well, here we go again, Joan. I wonder if you and I will ever be able to sit down and enjoy one thing at a time, Jerry. Well, what's the matter now? Every moment since you came to Euclidia, we have been exploring this or searching for that or looking for something else. Are we to spend the rest of our lives in corridors, looking for things always just beyond our reach? Well, golly whiskers, Joan. We've got to find out all we can about this Euclidia place. Why must we do it all so quickly? 
We will have ample time during our stay here. Oh, I know. You think we're going to be kept here until I've got a long gray beard that I keep falling over every time I take a step. But we won't be. We got away from here three times, and we can do it again. We got away from the island. It is not such a simple matter to escape from this place, I think. Oh, maybe not. But let's stop worrying about that and see what we can see. I do not find this long tube of polished metal very interesting. Well, I do. For one thing, we're going down pretty fast, and we've been walking fast. I wonder how far down we can go. We will be here long enough to learn the answer. Well, stop talking like that, Joan. We're not doing so bad. Badly. All right, then. Badly, we're not doing so. That is not correct. I know it, I know it, but who cares? Now, forget crying about how long we're going to be here, and let's try to learn something. A most excellent idea. Gee whiz. The commander. Precisely. Hey, where did you come from? If your eyes were as active as your tongue, you would have noticed that I merely opened a panel in this wall and stepped into the corridor with you. Well, why don't you make a little noise once in a while when you do those things? Sound is a useless disturbance where silence will serve. Is it permitted to ask questions, Commander? Naturally. You may ask as many questions as you wish. Will we get any answers? That will depend entirely on the question. Where are we in relation to the main portion of the underwater city? We are just above it. A few steps along this passageway will bring you to the main entrance. You are free to proceed there if you wish. Come on, Joan. Let's go. One moment, Jerry. Now, what's the matter? There is one other question I should like to ask the commander. Well, looks like you're too late. Jerry, she has gone. Just as quickly as she popped up, she popped out again. Then let us proceed. Okay. Let's also get going. Jerry, why oh, am I... Oh, never mind starting that grammar lesson again. I want to see what's behind that main entrance door the commander was talking about. Nevertheless, I think my question was important. Hmm? What was it? I wanted to ask the commander if the Euclidean living quarters were also along this corridor. If not, then what manner of room was it out of which she appeared? Well, I guess we'll find all that out when the time comes. But let's keep walking to that main gate. That blank wall directly before us must be the entrance. Yeah, everything here is a blank wall. Do you see anything with which to open it? Not a thing. But I guess we can just... Oh, that's funny. What is funny, Jerry? That blank wall. Why, a minute ago I could have reached out and touched it. And now it's a way up there ahead of us again. I think you are mistaken, Jerry. That must be an illusion. Maybe, but the joke's on that wall if it is, because the wall moved, and it's still moving. Now, Jerry... Now, see for yourself. We're walking all the time, aren't we? To be sure we are. And the wall's keeping ahead of us, isn't it? At least we do not approach it rapidly. Yeah, then the wall's going away from us. But why should the wall do that? Don't ask me why things happen in this funny place. All I want to do is to get through a door, and I can't even catch the blame thing. Jerry. Yeah? I think I know how the illusion is being created. How? Our descent is so rapid, the angle of this floor is so sharp, that what we supposed to be the end of the corridor was in reality part of the ceiling. Oh, I guess you're right. This thing does slope down pretty fast. Boy, we must be a long way under the ocean now. And I believe we are nearly to that door. That girl commander sure has wild ideas about how many steps there are in a few. You are impatient. Okay, I'm impatient. But just the same, I want to get someplace. Then your hope is about to be fulfilled. Mm, looks like it now, all right, Joan. If that isn't a solid wall in front of us, then I never saw one. I think we may safely enter. No danger of running into electricity in this door? The commander said we were free to use this doorway. Yeah, we're free to use it, but she didn't say anything about what would happen to us if we did use it. Now, Jerry, you are being, as you say about me, scared of everything. Well, I'll show you a thing or two. Well, maybe I will, if I can find out where to take hold of this door. Press upon it. I am pressing. Yeah, it moves up. Look, Joan, I'm just barely touching it with my hand. Just pushing up a little, and the whole end of the corridor is going right straight up. Oh, Jerry, look! Away down there on the floor of this cavern. Gee whiz, Joan. Oh, boy. Golly, whiskers. Oh, boy. We will go down and see it. Why, Joan, this, this is the biggest thing I ever saw in my life. I believe it is the largest spectacle of its kind in the world. Never have I heard anyone describe anything of such magnitude. Yeah, it's big, too. You remember I told you about the Carlsbad Caverns, those big caves in New Mexico back home? Yes, Jerry. But were they as large as this? They don't even start to be as big as this. Why, Joan, that place down there, that room, I guess you'd call it, must be a mile across. Easily that, Jerry. And it is half that in height. Look at the light shining on those hanging things. I can never remember what they're called. Those are stalactites. 
Well, the lower ones are stalagmites. Oh, I thought you said you had never seen them before. I have not, but I have learned about them. Oh, so have I, but that doesn't help me much when I try to remember what kind hang from the ceiling and which kind pile up from the floor. The stalactites are suspended from the ceiling. Remember that so you can tell me again, will you? I forget it. Boy, what a room this is. Yes, Jerry. It is impressive. And I believe I see the entrances to similar rooms on all sides. Sure looks like it, Joan. This thing we're standing on is a balcony, a still balcony built around the center of the cave. And we're pretty near halfway up the side and... Hey, Joan. Joan! What is it, Jerry? You are hurting my arm. Oh, sorry, but I got excited. Look down on the floor of this cave, right under us. Yes. I do not understand what it is you wish me to observe. Trees, green grass, and big trees growing in this cave under the ocean. We must be 300 feet down by now. At least 300 feet below the surface of the water. Now I know where they got all of that fresh cream and butter and fresh vegetables. There's cows down there, Joan. Cows and pastures and green grass and trees. I see them. Is that so unexpected? Now, look, Joan, don't act like that. You know as well as I do that green grass and trees don't grow like that in a dark cave under the water. They've got to have sunlight and fresh air. This would seem to prove that you are wrong, Jerry. You can see the green vegetation, and you can see the cows. And you have eaten fresh vegetables, milk, cream, and butter that obviously came from here. Sometime I hope to make you realize that on Euclidia, things which cannot be done 